Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's Church as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And we celebrate today uh, with great joy this Mass, this third Sunday of Easter. But it is also a special day for a number of our parishioners who are making their first communion today, Josephine, Wyatt, and Braden. And as they celebrate this first communion, this great gift of God of himself to us and to them, may we who receive Christ today and open our hearts to him and all that he desires for us. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have done to you, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, your Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, 
to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe, cry out. 
to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards dragging the net with the fish. When they had climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. And Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, the Mass is a gift, and we are so blessed to be able to celebrate the sacrament of the Eucharist here at Mass on Sundays or vigil on Saturday to receive the Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, and to grow in that communion with God and with one another. That's why we call it communion, because it connects us, it unites us together with God and with one another. And that is a gift not only for us individually, but for the whole church. And so when people make their first Holy Communion, we rejoice all together. The church rejoices with you because it is good for you, but it is good for all of us as well. And we delight in sharing this joy with you. Today, um, earlier this morning, I had a funeral mass over at St. Joseph for, for Joyce. And uh, Joyce was 90 years old um, and had seven children. And one of her, her daughters, her oldest daughter, spoke a little bit um, for a, a eulogy during the mass. And, and one of the things she said, she said um, her mother was born on All Saints Day, November 1st, which is a holy day of obligation in this country, a day we're expected to go to mass. And she, she kind of liked that idea. She uh, uh, especially said to her children as they, as they grew older, uh, and even as they moved out of the house, she said, the best gift that you could ever give me on my birthday is if you go to Mass. If you go to Mass, that would be the best gift you could give me as your mother, as a mother who loves you, as a mother who wants to see you be happy and successful. The best thing that you can do and the way that I will find the most comfort, the most joy, is if I know that you, my children, are going to Mass. And I thought that was very beautiful, very powerful, especially since today, April 30th, is the birthday of my mother. Uh, and just this reminder for me of how much our parents care for us, how much parents care for, for you, their children, and how we honor them and how we connect with them, how we unite with them, how we have communion with them is through prayer, through God, through the sacraments, through the Eucharist. First communicants, all of us here, if you want to remember your parents, if you want to remember that communion that we are to share with one another, the best thing you can do for them is go to Mass, is to receive the Eucharist is to let God into your heart, to follow Jesus as he instructs his disciples in the gospel today. And know that he will be with you, that he will lead you to holiness, he will lead you to happiness beyond what anything else the world can provide. And it will be for you and for your loved ones that gift beyond all telling. Today, in a particular way, uh, for our First Communion students, as they uh, come forward before the Lord, they are to profess their faith, to acknowledge that God has been at work in their life since their baptism. So they, along with all of us, will profess those uh, baptismal vows and acknowledge God's work in their life. So dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism. As we now walk with him in newness of life, we now renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, First Communion students and all present, do you renounce Satan 
I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty show. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Extinguish your candles now. Having turned to the Lord, knowing that he is present for us, that he is in our hearts and in our lives and in the communion that we share in the church, we now offer these prayers and petitions. For the Pope and all pastors, that they guard the Lord's flock with patient love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they will govern in accord with God's wisdom and ensure the right to life, freedom, and peace for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people who receive Jesus in First Communion and the Holy Spirit in Confirmation, that their hearts will be open to the powerful work of the Spirit in their lives. We praise, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering members of the human family, that those who deal with illness, grief, natural disaster, or social unrest will find healing and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather for crops and cattle, and that God will bless and protect all those who labor in fields and farms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Steve Simonitz, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died, Jeanette Bechtold and Joyce Brannon, who passed away recently, that they will live in the joy of God forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our individual intentions, which we now offer in silent prayer. For all of these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Join us in praying for our sister parish. Creator God, you made this world and saw it as In your creation, that have gifted us with many cultures. Through this diversity, there is much that you can teach us in our relationships with each other. Today, the Holy Spirit inspires us to do global connections with a message of love throughout the world. We ask that you continue to bless our sister parish relationship between Blessed Sacrament of Gordy and Kenya and the churches of St. Michael and St. Cloud and St. Joseph's of Lake Park. We ask this to the one who united himself to the whole human race and who walks with us as we all go to you together, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
Christ will return to set us free. One sacrifice of love, one message for the nations. Jesus suffered, died, and rose, and ascended to the throne. Christ will return to save the Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the souls of the Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, 
and in his rising the life of all has risen therefore overcome with paschal joy every land every people exalt in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion today uh, we'll go down for the first communions and their their families their parents and uh, first uh, and then after they have received and, and gone back then uh, the other extraordinary ministers will come forward and everybody else can receive uh, as normal
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in the gathering space following this Mass for cake and juice in celebration of our first communicants and their family. Everyone is invited. There should be plenty of cake for you, so again, uh, enjoy communion. Again, the fellowship that we have in Christ and with one another uh, that we celebrate every time we come to Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, by, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Praise be to God. As we close our Mass, I invite you to kneel for the St. Michael prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the greatness and spirit of the devil. May God be with him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, for all of the world and the souls. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.